Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to the first Science of Soul podcast, which we're going to be calling SOS Podcast for short. Um, yeah, I'm your host, Jabir Khan, and I'm going to be joined by Zainal Abedin, and we're going to be your hosts. And on this podcast, we're going to be talking about all sorts of different things that are all to do with what we understand about the world around us and ourselves and that relationship spirituality, science, all sorts of stuff. On this first episode, me and Abdin get into the weeds about what we think the soul is, if you can even answer that. And yeah, um, it's our first podcast together. And so you're gonna have to forgive us for a little bit of uh, getting comfortable, getting warmed up at the beginning. But yeah, sit back and enjoy the Science of Soul podcast. This is the, it's the awkward first date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With uh, the blue lights. What would you say to someone on a first date? I've been married 10 years and the thought of that just makes me, I it think, makes me like sweat and come out in hives. I think you just have to go simple, but people don't like simple. You just have to say, hi there, how are you? That's it. And okay. then go with the flow and a little bit of small talk. Not everyone Genuinely, I wouldn't talk. have even thought of that. I would have just been in a what? cold sweat, panicking so what would silently. You, what, would have you, what would you say? For you, it's like one of those movies, isn't it? Like you've kind of wrestled with a crocodile and then you sexually came out from the pond and she looks at you and you look at her and you wink and that's it. <clears throat> that is partly true because what happens to me is sometimes I'll go blank and I'll think about things that I'm saying, how sick it's going. Then someone will be like, oh, excuse me, you just been sat there silently <laughs> for the last 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, oh. Like I, sometimes I think stuff is happening, but it's actually just in my head. Do you have a theme tune while you, if you were walking to a date, would you have a theme tune? Like, yeah, do definitely. Do you want me to hum it? Yeah, go on. <laughs> That's such a pansy theme tune. What would yours be? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm, what I'm kind of learning is that we, we seem to be at two ends of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Where's the middle ground, bro? <laughs> bro, the spe spectrum exists because of us, bro. Otherwise, yeah, there'd be are no the spectrum. We spectrum, it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love the spectrum. The spectrum is good. So what do we do? What do we talk about? <clears throat> I don't know. I, you know, it seems like we actually don't know what we, we've just blagged ourselves into this and we don't know what we're going to talk about, but we actually have something to talk about. Okay. Actually, you know what? Okay. Okay. I think, I, I think let's, let's kind of roll into the things that we wanted to speak about today. Yeah. Good and idea. Um, I actually had a... Uh, interesting conversation with somebody very close to me who is going through a very difficult time and I've spoken to you about it and I don't think he'll appreciate me or she will appreciate me kind of um, naming them or anything like that um, but where we are at now is so he kind of spoken to the crisis team the mental health crisis team and they've uh, established that he's not a threat to himself okay so he you know, I tried to do he and she, but it's not working out. Um, it's not a threat to himself, isn't a threat to uh, the public, so they don't have to section him. The other thing is that he's not, uh, obviously, he's not an immediate threat to himself, self, so maybe uh, a different route of uh, therapy or, you know, uh, management can be pursued, and that being talking therapy as opposed to medication. Um but the plan last week was actually to kind of get um, him to speak to a psychiatrist this week. Yeah. And that didn't happen. <clears throat> uh, and they just said that they're just going to refer him to a psychologist. And that he was quite disappointed by that. And I, you know, I, I was speaking to him about it. And, you know, we had a very lengthy conversation. Um, but it reminded me of something that he said which relates to what we want to speak about today, that being the soul. Um, 
And he said something quite interesting. And, you know, it's something that I felt as well when I was younger. I'm not quite sure if I felt it before or after I kind of uh, realized or knew or understood or had been ex explained to uh, 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 about what, what soul soul is, etc. Mm -hmm. But he kind of, the 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 kind of feeling that I got from him or the understanding that I got from him that he separated himself from his body somehow and that's really interesting to me because it's very difficult to kind of distinguish what the soul is even in you know theology Islamic theology it's quite difficult to kind of describe what the soul is mm. um, even Muhammad the Prophet Muhammad he sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't even he even said that he doesn't know. Um, but going back to, you know, what I was saying about my, uh, uh, this uh, that was close, relative, bro. I know that was very close. This relative of mine, um, it reminded me of what I felt when I was younger. And I always used to feel that I could hide away inside myself. Mm -hmm. And if people were to judge me, they will be judging my body, not necessarily me, because all they can experience or all they can see is is my is my body so i think that was i could say going back now like thinking back now I, then i didn't know oh he was the soul and stuff like that i can't even think i can't remember me kind of contemplating those sort of things however going like retros sorry retrospectively um it's a it's a you know was i kind of experiencing my soul Mm. So basically, to get this, to, to understand what you're saying, <clears throat> you distinguish the body from this other thing, which is the soul. I think so. They're two I, different things. That is what I want to say now. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like yeah, back yeah. then, I can't, like thinking about those moments, I can't say that I was, I was thinking like that. I was say, thinking that, oh, that's my soul and this is my body. <clears throat> All I can remember thinking is I am different or I am separate from my body. And this is something mm. that this relative of mine was saying as well. Okay. And that kind of uh, reminded me of what I was, what I was feeding. Yeah. Um, the reason why I say it is because I'm very confused by the soul. And rightly so. There is, there is hardly anything out there to explain what the soul is. There is no Islamic uh, literature out there explaining what the soul is. We are to just uh, accept that there is a soul and there is something that will live outside the body hmm. or lives, can live outside the body. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting because that experience that you had and that, you know, the, the person that you're talking about had is similar to one I remember where when my grandfather passed away, um, so in like part of Islamic funerals is that you have to wash the body before you bury mm, it. Mm. And so we had to, um, me, my younger brother and my dad, along with the imam, we were the ones washing um, his, his body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember seeing him and looking at him and he was in like his... His condition, his physical condition when he'd passed away was, you know, he looked clear. He, he didn't have any signs of any kind of trauma. serious yep, illness. Yep, yep. Yeah, there's no trauma. Um, so, you know, the body looked fine. Mm -hmm. It's not like it looked swollen or inflated or mm -hmm. somehow scarred or anything like that. It was mm. just, it was his body. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like when they say um, the lights are on but no one's home, that kind yep, of thing. Yep, yep. Well, this was just like... There's no lights on either. Mm. It was him, but it wasn't him. Mm. Like I was looking at this body and I was like, that's not really my grandfather. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like it's part of him. His physicality is mm. there. Mm. But the thing that made him him is not there. Mm. Now, some people say, duh, like he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. But that, that essence thing, that thing that is immaterial is not there. And I guess... If anyone was to say, oh, what is the soul? Like, so I, I was doing all this research today yeah, about, yeah. like, what we might talk about. And we'll, we can go through it eventually. But if anyone was to s ask me, obviously, I can't define it. And Islamically, like, there's not that much that's concrete about this is yeah, the soul. Yeah, yeah. But if I was to say what it is, I'd say, well, 
it's the thing that departs when someone is dead. Yeah. yeah and yeah. when you look at a dead body, yeah. that is something that has no soul. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, you know, that is a very good description. Um, and it's, it's the thing that, the, the way I kind of try to describe it is very similar to that. It's the thing that the angels carry away with them. Um, as they ascend to the heavens. Um, so from that, scholars have said that it is a substance, it is something. Yeah. Uh, what that something is, we we don't know. Mm, that's interesting. So do you think there is a, like, so this is the bit of the podcast that we're trying to, <clears throat> trying to sort of keep in mind because of the way we think about stuff and your job and your mm. studying and stuff. The science element of it. If there is a substance to it, is that something that's made up of what the physical world is made up of, like atoms and protons and things like that? that that's actually a really good, int very interesting, interesting thing. I'm an interesting guy, bro. I think it's, um, it'd be so cool, but, uh, you know, it sounds really cool what the soul is made out of, yeah. especially with the, you know, the advancement in physics and what we are uh, kind of is discovering now with quarks and antimatter and quarks i just find that a funny word <laughs> uh, and so many other things you know we we i think that should give us and i think that kind of reaffirms my belief in the soul um something that is beyond or something that has been hasn't been discovered yet did you think it could be you say yet i mean you think there's potential that someone could measure what it is or what it's made of quantify it somehow i don't think so i don't think because i i, I personally because i am a muslim and because um you know the things that have been uh, kind of prescribed or said by the prophet Absolutely. i believe it's something that is going to stay a mystery yeah um we'll probably experience and experience it in the next world but i don't think it's something that we can kind of measure quantify in this world yeah so um, basically we will never be able to quantify it because it's been kept with uh, yeah like, I, I, outside I, of our reach yeah i think it won't and i think you know <clears throat> if you can quantify the soul it kind of defeats the point of trying to believe in something blindly yeah that but then being, won't, won't people who look at the world empirically say yeah but then how could i possibly um bring that into my consciousness as something that i believe in or you know, believe is a weird word because it's so associated with religion, but like something that I can trust exists as part of the reality that we're all sharing. Yeah, I think I think that is more of, um, how should I say it? How should I describe it? Well, I believe in, in the soul. I don't have concrete evidence for it. Um, I can't prove that it exists. Mm hmm uh, I could even say I'm blindly following that it exists. It exists. One could even say that I'm deluded by it, but I, I think I'll be happily deluded by this, the idea of the soul because I think, yeah, it's very important to know. I mean, it's, it's nice to know, actually, it's interesting to know what the soul is, but more importantly is the, the impact or the implications of believing in the soul is far superior, I believe, than, you know, knowing what the soul is. Do you mean like morals and stuff? Or? Yeah, morals, purpose. I think, for example, um, I, I choose to believe in the soul because I don't, I don't want to accept that this is the only world. I don't want to accept that. I'm being really frank here. And if one was to call me deluded, I'll be, you know, I'll be happy, happy to accept that just because of the satisfaction and... Um, the relief believing in the soul gives me. Mm. I'd be more than happy to accept that. Um, what I'm trying to say is this world, you know, sometimes it's, it lasts for a few, few hours, other times it lasts for hundreds of years. And in that world, from, I mean, as a clinician, I see a lot of suffering. You know, every single day of my life, I see a lot of people suffering. And then when we look at what in the wider community, in the wider world, we see tons of injustice, tons of suffering. Um, and I just think it's, you know, us being humane and us being 
you know, uh, always striving for justice. I don't. It'd be un, it'd be it'd be unjust to say that there is no soul, because what happens to the the mur murdered? You know, they don't. And when the murderer murderer gets away, yeah. does that does that? I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But or, just because just because <clears throat> you want that to be the case, just because there's something in you that desires for that is that enough for it to necessitate it that like what i'm trying to get at is someone who you know comes from a different um cultural understanding like we're going to see in a second there's some crazy variations in understandings mm. of soul mm. but say say someone was sat in front of you who had no frame of reference for what justice is yeah yeah or for what um what like obviously we're both muslim so we've mm. got that islamic foundation of our understanding of things but like say someone's got not even i'm not even talking about a scientist mm. just someone who's outside of that framework um what would you say to them that would give them an inkling that oh yeah you know what like i've experienced that or i've i've witnessed that or maybe something that you could um use as an argument that isn't the same as like empirical evidence mm. exactly because obviously mm. the soul like we said is something that you can't really measure but it's something where you're like oh that actually makes a lot of sense so maybe rational sense so maybe that's what i'm talking yeah. about like meaning i can't really uh, yeah i honestly can't because it's so abstract i can't i, I can't and i i think it's beyond that rational understanding and okay. i would like to keep it there yeah so I, that's that's actually okay so what i love about that is that that gives us a perfect way now after blimey like 20 minutes of no, finally wow. introducing what the podcast is so the science of soul hmm. um it's us two maybe with some guests as well hopefully if we can get them on hopefully. um and it's us two like trying to figure out what what makes us tick what um gives us a sense of purpose and what we can share with others about our shared experience of being a human being of being someone who uh wants to do good mm -hmm. and through through that like through the exploration of that of of these ideas and topics mm. we kind of get a little bit closer to what the soul is you mm -hmm. know and also like i think the cool thing about the name science of soul is you're someone who does have a scientific background mm. um i i like i'm super interested in things that are backed by science mm. you know like mm. i i find i'm i find i'm um increasingly like in my old age uh, i'm getting skeptical of when i hear stuff especially from relatives and friends when they're gossiping about this or that and you're like really like what what's the basis for that and mm. what what i'm talking about in you know in in those in reference to that is things like when people talk about ghost stories and okay yeah all sorts of crazy stuff and you're like really but yeah. i'm not against it mm. i'm just like well okay how it's can we it's flipping interesting though isn't it's flipping it? interesting bro i wish it was real yeah you know like i'm not saying that it's not real but yeah. but i think uh, yeah you've i think in this podcast for me it's about being realistic being real may not have the answers to everything but i think it's important to ask the questions um, and opening up people's minds and actually knowing that there are holes and there's 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 things to explore um in in certain ideas uh i'm getting deja vu just have we been here before there's a glitch know. in the matrix bro yeah can i okay so can i start telling you some of the stuff yeah, that i yeah. read primarily on wikipedia <laughs> did you really yeah but it's really interesting stuff uh -huh. so you know all my all my um what's it called you're just a walking, talking encyclopedia. That's what you're going to say, isn't it? No, no, no. All, all my uh, theses started from Wikipedia. Theses? Theses. Theses. I, did, I genuinely... I I'm going to have some. I'm going to have some fake coke. Have some fizzy water. I heard you say all my theses, theses started from <laughs> oh, Wikipedia. That's, that's hilarious. Um, okay, so on Wikipedia, um, the general description... Like the most general description of what a soul is is a non physical essence of a living being, and different like different um societies and cultures had a different idea of um what the soul is or was or 
was never depending on your your stance mm, on it mm. but what i will say is that there are some similarities that are kind of spooky okay it's almost like you know how when you look at like world civilizations they all in some way started worshiping deities yeah that i find know. that so fascinating yeah it's so interesting right like, like just, they're so disconnected but they have such similar ideas yeah so in that regard there's some spooky similarities that yeah. you'd be like oh that's kind of weird i mean like the judeo christian you know the abrahamic faiths yeah, like yeah. you it's kind of like a given why they're yeah yeah but i'm talking about like ones from like shamanistic ones and yeah. um the greeks and like people from like different disconnected parts of the world mm. like you said so um the greeks like socrates thought the soul had a logical faculty so that means they kind of connected it a lot to, a lot with the mind mm. so you know how you were talking about that relative of yours um and how they were talking about the soul being um separate from the body but what like the moment you started talking about that the thing that crossed my mind was the fact that okay there's definitely a question about what the soul is because the thing that had been afflicted in that particular instance was mm. the mind and maybe that's mm, what was mm. leading down like the, that that road of questions like yeah, what is yeah. the soul because if if what i'm feeling yeah as in emotions and what i'm thinking is damaged then is that related to what my soul is or is that something is it like is that only limited to here whereas the part of me which is transcendent mm. is still pure and unharmed and like i i, I don't i'm not assuming that that's what that mm. person was thinking but mm. um a lot of what uh is really interesting about what i was reading was that some people couldn't separate the soul from the mind specifically um uh ibn sina so ibn sina i, I think I, I, i've <clears throat> seen it yeah he's he's um he, he one of the questions he asks is if i didn't have arms or legs or yeah. body yeah i'll just be floating in space or along those lines he says something along those lines so basically it's um the it's like a floating man thought experiment yep yep and he says that imagine you're in a room and you don't have a body yeah. yeah like if you if you close your eyes and imagine that you still have um a self-awareness yeah like you you're still kind of thinking and you still can refer to your own narrative of like mm. i am me and so therefore in his mind the soul is still like connected with mm. that idea of like self-consciousness yeah which is kind of um which is kind of interesting because it's it's um like right now if if there was a crisis of anything it is there is like a massive crisis of mental health yeah but at the same time you have this decline in um spirituality and mm. religion so you can look at like this crazy correlation mm. of a crisis of mental health with a crisis of the soul mm. do you know mm. what i mean yeah like we haven't seen yeah such an adoption of um uh like materialism and uh like very empiricist thinking at any other time in history mm. and at the same time we haven't seen such a crisis in mental health as well yeah yeah i think <clears throat> with uh the floating man experiment when i first thought of it when i first heard of it it was uh, you know i was I, I was thinking about it and I was just thinking, well, you know what, is the brain, you know, is the brain the mind or, you know, is there something different? Is the brain and the mind different? Yeah. But, you know, the brain is a very powerful thing. It's a very powerful thing. The connections that we have um, are innumerous. Is the brain, are the connections so vast that we can actually invent a narrative of ourselves where whereby even if we were to imagine that we didn't have a body we still imagine ourselves to exist mm. if, does that make sense yeah <clears throat> it's it's it, you know what is it to exist I, I i guess i'm making it in this a bit too deep but what is it to exist is to know that there is a room and you're inside this room and you know getting feedback from this room but you know all these faculties these senses these pathways put together can they 
you know, uh, for example, if, if if I say, well, there's a room and, you know, I can see the room. Um, but that doesn't say that I exist. That doesn't prove that I exist. But there's a room and I can feel myself sitting on this 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 chair. Those two information put together and the pathways involved in connecting these two things together. Is that powerful enough to deceive us to think that we exist? Yeah. But really, it's just what a lot of these atheists and agnostics maybe would say that we're just chemistry. Yeah. I mean, there is an element of that that I find I find it fascinating and I'm not going to say compelling, but I've, you know, like when you experience it in yourself. So yeah. one thing I started doing a few years ago, um, and I know it's big fad and like everyone's jumping on it, but... I'm owning up to it, yeah? I jumped on that fad as well. And that's meditation. Mm -hmm. And it, honestly, like for me, it, Alhamdulillah, it did a lot of, um, it did a lot of good. Mm. Um, but one thing I found from, from having done that was it kind of made my, um, if, if, if I was to describe myself or analogize myself as like a tuning fork, mm -hmm. it made my tuning fork a little bit more um, refined mm. so that I could like, you know what a tuning fork is, that thing where you hit it and it goes, yep, yep. <clears throat> and you get like a perfect pitch and tone from that, yeah, yeah. you know, for various notes. Um, so what I would have described myself before is like just a friggin' stainless steel spoon. You hit it, it doesn't make no notes. It doesn't, what I mean by this analogy is that my ability to sense what's going on yeah. and really listen and know what inputs are driving certain behaviors yeah. was completely dulled yeah, because yeah. of, you know, crappy lifestyle, crappy food, mm -hmm. um, not being like aware and conscious of, of what's going on around me. So mm. after I started meditating, I started becoming a little bit more like, oh, that's what's going on. Mm. You know, like just like a fine tuned, pit, like a, a tuning fork. Like I could hear that's bugging me. Like I haven't eaten. That's making me moody today. Mm. It's got nothing to do with unpaid bills or nothing to do with, or, or say it, oh, it is something to do with unpaid bill. Like I, I was a bit more, um, uh, uh, able to identify the things that are going on. And so when, when someone says like, oh, we are basically just like, um, inputs and outputs and algorithm and chemistry that is mm. driving certain behavior, I'm not going to say like completely buy it, but I can sense it in myself. Mm. If I have, if I have a Red Bull, I know there's a certain behaviors that I'm going to exhibit mm. Mm. compared to if I just have water. And mm. if I have, say, um, a burger as opposed to, you know, okay, I'm using food example because I'm quite hungry now. But um, if, if, you know, if someone is a douchebag to me, yeah. then I'm going to have, I'm going to carry that, yeah, yeah. that on to like <clears throat> the next person I meet, even if I really don't want to. Mm. And, you know, the, I guess with the meditation, it's kind of helped me now be more aware of it and be like, you know what, don't do that. But, you know, your average human being is kind of, so you would say that meditation is a ha is having an impact on your soul? That's a deep question, bro. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely say the mechanics of... Oh, I'm going to sound like proper, like, like an atheist or something. Not that that's a bad thing, but I'm going to... I'm going to say that it's definitely helped the mechanics of this fleshy body. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a lot of um, white noise sometimes that's going on in the head yeah. from just too much stimulus whether mm. it's like bare youtube videos and arguments with people and um eating a lot of rubbish mm. and not enough exercise and all yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff it i mean we like there is an element of us being machines right yeah and if you if you fine tune this machine and maintain it mm. you get more out of it mm. um or it performs better mm. so mm. Yeah. i think <clears throat> i can see you disagree i can see you disagree I uh, no 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 I I I do agree because I I'm confused I'm well I'm not confused <clears throat> for me the way I like to think about the soul like I told you before it's more of the you know the, what implications does that have for society does it have a good implication or a bad implication if the if everything has pros and cons if the cons outweigh the 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 pros then you know you may think like okay fine let's not let's let's kind of disregard that that thought but here i feel like that the the pros outweigh the the cons um and you know what i wanted to say about 
about that my understanding of the of the soul is um well i don't not my understanding i just think i guess the question is can the soul experience this world without the body oh um is that what you are, are you saying that's what you want to find out that is well that is that is the question isn't it it's not why whether i'll find out whether uh, you know if if it does or doesn't but i think that is a question that needs to be there to kind of prevent us from i, th I think i know how we can find out <laughs> Drugs, bro. Does it involve? <laughs> does it involve drugs? Yes, it does. I'm just gonna. Oh. <laughs> well, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, I think <clears throat> the evidence. Uh, I mean, uh, like, I mean, when when we w the the things that we have, or the things that describe the soul. For example, our, our, the, the, when God describes or the Quran describes how Adam was created, yeah. Adam's body was created and it was an empty shell. And we know that it was an empty shell. And that is how it's described as an empty shell without yeah. life until life was breathed into him. And mm. that is when he became conscious. Mm. So that is why why i'm asking does the does the soul become conscious where, you know is that one of the processes first process where the the soul becomes conscious once it's inside the body okay well here's here's some interesting stuff on that question so firstly you know how you said the soul was breathed into adam and islam right yeah yeah, yeah. so one thing that's kind of cool is you know the word for soul yeah. in so many different um okay like languages and cultures that are quite disparate like they're quite disconnected yeah is breath or wind or something to do with air so for yeah. example in um in judaism they've got two words and for our jewish friends i am so sorry that i'm going to pronounce these word wrongs in hebrew i think one is uh which is wind and then there's another one which is neshemeh which is breath so that's judaism now okay you can say well you know, we're from the Judeo-Christian yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like that that tradition or that lineage, but shamanism, yeah, shamans, bro, yeah, you know what I'm talking about yeah, ayahuasca yeah. and all that, yeah. yeah, they their word for um for the soul is nawa, which is breath. Matt shamans, bro, they like they're not. It's crazy, isn't it? It's like you know everything's just. This is why I find this, uh, you know, these things amazing. Like, you know, we're talking about soul here, but the the f the first time I kind of, um, you know, was educated about this was the pyramids, where you had the Egyptian ancient mm. Egyptians, the Mayans, and the Indians. They were building, uh, you know, similar structures for certain things, and they were they were completely disconnected. Um, and this is this I, I find that I don't know what to make of it and people will have their own opinions of you know a lot of people have strong opinions on that and they try to use this to kind of justify certain certain ide ideologies and uh, you know etc uh, but I, I just I just find that really interesting and I believe that shows how connected we are mm. um, I mean I also think that like okay with with the pyramids maybe I can't explain that because uh, there is an element of um, precision and knowledge that is required to erect these things which are so similar yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, that, that's like another conversation that would be really yeah, cool yeah, to yeah, like go yeah. into. But what I would say with, um, say like with the soul and the wording and stuff, I almost feel like it's as if um, we've naturally come to the same conclusions mm. through our experiences of the world. So even if you can't you say... Think? Well, say say it's not... Um, because I was actually thinking the other way. What, I wasn't that? thinking because of our experience. I was thinking that we have been all sent the same message. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that, that kind of falls into that as well. Like the idea that you... Um, basically, the point I was making was that... Sorry. Um, in, in a kind of scientific but non-scientific way, meaning experience. Mm. So, you know, like, um, you know, you have like N of one studies... Mm. the end of one study of your life is you mm. like you have experienced things and you can say this is what works for me and this is what doesn't mm -hmm, work mm -hmm. for me and so if you say an end of humanity or whatever like everyone 
has at some point felt loss yeah. or everyone at some point has felt love i would say mm. you know and everyone at some point has needed to eat and everyone mm. at some point has needed to go to the bathroom and so through those kind of um like very trivial uh trivial experiences mm. to the more deeper experiences yeah, yeah. of like yeah. love okay. and losing someone people have come i i like i agree with you that of course like someone who knew something deeper came mm. to these mm. people mm. and those those people who came to deliver that that information were probably all connected and from you know like sent by the same source but the 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 conclusion that all these different people re were reaching um is kind of almost inevitable because mm. like yeah because of the fact that they are from the same place and if you are from that place then eventually you're going to just come back to that conclusion yeah, anyway yeah. do you know what i mean yeah um so that was my thinking on 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 that but yeah i i definitely agree with you about from from like a theological perspective yeah. but also um also a common sense perspective because some yeah, stuff yeah, is yeah. like how would you know it unless well, i told think, you i right? think i think what, what you were saying yeah has a you know it, it i think it resonates with the theological perspective as well yeah where you know we we in islam we have this idea of um i've forgotten fitra fitra yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly this, yeah of you know uh, that we have a soul um and it's yeah it's interesting how we all describe it as breath and you know uh, as wind another spooky um similarity which i know you're going to get excited about so Just you know have a bit more yeah yeah carry on um you know how there's there's something really interesting about how sleep is regarded by um okay I'm not gonna say by Islam, but meaning like by, by from from the traditions that we've heard about sleep and from yeah. the ayahs that there may or may not be about sleep. I'm, I'm I'm really not educated enough to know, but I know that there is some interesting things about what sleep is regarded as. Yeah. Um, like biomechanically, like what is sleep, and there's some interesting things that scholars have said, and I'm sure the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and there may or may not be in the ayahs of the Quran. Well, the shamans again. I'm going to my going back to the shamans um they they had this idea of like a dual soul so one which is kind of in your um in your ab abdominal cavity you can say mm. that resides there and then another one which resides in your head mm -hmm. and the one in your head which is referred to as a free soul when you go to sleep it leaves the body and it roams around in the spirit plane and then when you wake up it comes back and when i was reading i was like Oh my goodness, this sounds really familiar. Not exactly the same, but something about it seems familiar. Mm, mm. And I was like, oh, I've got to tell Abdin about that because isn't that similar to, you know, I don't know, maybe you could fill me in because I'm, I'm not totally sure on that one. But Yeah, we, we, we are believed to have kind of come out from our bodies and experience a different uh, reality. When we sleep? When we sleep, yeah. So it's spe like specifically the soul leaves the body when you sleep. That is the idea. That is the idea. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That imagine like Muslims would believe that, and yeah. then shamans, yeah, you know, from like the Amazon jungle or whatever would have believe a similar, yeah. similar hold a similar belief, especially one that's kind of you could say is kind of far fetched. And a lot of these, I mean, I mean, it comes from uh, you know tribal land, the tribal living which mm. were they were very disconnected even now a lot of them are yeah. disconnected yeah, yeah yeah so to think that <clears throat> well maybe you know muhammad went and traveled to the amazon rainforest and learned it from a shaman called mark is a bit you know mark the shaman mark the shaman is a bit bit silly anyway i i i, I get, yeah i think i think those things are 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 fascinating um but the, for me, um, the soul is something that I believe in. And I, I was when I when you were talking actually, I was thinking we are on a completely different, the opposite side of the spectrum. So I, <laughs> yeah. I sound very selfish, like you know, this is this is my understanding. It makes me feel good, so it's fine. Um, where your outlook is more to make it generic and make it, make it help others 
others understand, which is actually really well. Know. No, like I, I want to get it too. Like honestly, I want to understand it too. But maybe my 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 um, maybe I'm just a bit more of a beige guy, <laughs> like a generic guy. Like basically. Well, I, I, no, I don't mean like like that. I mean like to make this understanding accessible to others, which is oh yeah yeah, which I think it's it's really really difficult. It is hard. Well, again, it's literally because I want to get it myself. There's yeah. things that I have felt and experienced and there's things I've read and I have things that I've been told by scholars and teachers and you know you want to you want to like reconcile all these di- things because sometimes yeah. they're different yeah sometimes you experience something in life and what a scholar says doesn't mm. ring true or doesn't hold true not to say that what they're saying is false but meaning you can't relate to it you can't mm. like somehow um have 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 an experience in life that is reflected in what's mm. being said mm. and then sometimes you read something um and it it correlates completely with what mm. you have experienced but then you know maybe there's things that are subject to interpretation as well mm. so it's just a case of me just like wanting to spell it out because i'm a i'm you know i'm a dummy and i want to get it like as simply as possible and i guess in a way that is also um that is like when we say science of soul it's not that we're going to like somehow quantify yeah. anything but it's the idea that science um to me at least means curiosity mm-hmm. it means understanding and for me understanding means spelling it out cuz otherwise I won't get stuff yeah yeah um but that's that's so hard that is so difficult being as being uh, 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 like a scientist myself um even the things that are concrete and rock hard and material um even that is you know it's sometimes it's problematic and it's difficult to kind of explain uh why things are things are happening yeah um so i think yeah yeah uh, starting with the soul is very um you know as i said i'm i'm i don't have many answers i have more questions than i have i have an- answers mm. but that doesn't mean that i don't believe in it i definitely believe in it yeah. and it's not something that i feel like that i would stop believing in yeah um um because of the experiences that i've i've had and you know how i feel about myself and who i am um exactly because you, you can't deny your experiences right yeah but again you know although i said that you can you can explain your experiences yeah and i can explain it in a very chemistry kind of way mm. that is just a memory you've you've got this memory and it's you know why is it that you can't remember all the experiences that you've had yeah is because certain experiences have a far more impactful kind of uh, uh effect on you therefore yeah. that that memory is stronger or it's associated with something else yeah. therefore you remember that that experience you don't remember every single good experience so okay. the the question is well if the soul is experiencing things then why is it forgetting other things why is it yeah. remembering certain things that's why i think that this world i personally think and the question is does the soul need to be attached to this body to experience this world and from the understanding that i have so far it's it's on the side of yes as opposed to no, uh, on the side of no and i believe that um you know we need to go through a, a a different process in order to for the the soul to mature enough that it can experience things without the body there having said that for some reason in islamic literature it always talks about the soul going back into the body whether you're dead when you come back to life your body is resurrected and mm. this you know yeah so again you know does does the soul need a body to experience yeah uh, and remember well one one thing that's um interesting in islamic uh in islamic literature you know imam al haddad yep so he's got you know the lives of man the book that he wrote the lives of man okay and he talks about um you know when uh i mean this is the ayahs in the quran but when 
all the souls took yeah. the covenant. So, yes. Uh, so yep, and Allah. Yep, yep, yep. And so he specifically says in the lives of man mm. that their the soul's ability to know or remember is based on like the level of that soul. So for example, you know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon yeah, yeah. him. So when we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's basically us saying peace be upon him. <laughs> say it so fast. So, so, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are, what People are like, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when when his soul took the covenant and um, experience all those things because of his level of who yeah, he is and yeah, was yeah. he can remember all of that clearly oh, wow okay. yeah but because of us being like average joes yeah um and also our level of like knowledge and deen and um spirituality and stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, we will remember more or less based on that yeah. um and i think what's what's cool about that is that at least from that, you are given this, this kind of encouragement that you know mm. what. You could, you could potentially remember if you try to remember. Yeah. Because there yeah. is like an active process of remembering things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I don't know about you, but when I can't remember something, I'm gonna just squeeze <laughs> until I can find it in my head. Um. So with, with. With that specifically, I think that's got a little bit more to do with what you were talking about, where you, you know, like refine the soul. Yeah. So that it's kind of a bit more like sensitive to being able to recall those things, maybe. Mm. I, I, it's like when, when you start talking about it, it makes, it makes me get sinking deeper into the, into the rabbit hole. Yeah. It's a rabbit like, hole, you but. know, I'm just, now I'm thinking like, what if the soul and remembering and memory has, something to do with time itself because we rem we forget over time yeah. but if the concept of time or the concept or you know our understanding of time changes it changes does that change how much we remember yeah does that does that make sense as opposed to thinking time to be a linear thing thinking of time to be <laughs> i don't know how to describe it like uh, cyclic or you know that's even that's still movement that's still movement from one place to another but yeah you know something that's outside of the language that we know yeah time is static yeah. time being static because that really outside time time you know has time stopped is it static and is that what the prophet Muhammad experienced so, so. yeah because he was able to go through these realities yeah and experiencing experience things which other people couldn't experience for example the the ascend uh, ascending to the heavens where you know it was so quick but it felt like he got through so much in such a short short period of time yeah um but you know that again that's just a random thought that i was i was getting while you were you were you were talking i might be completely you know talking out of my but you know hey i had that thought <laughs> no it's 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 amazing i mean okay so one thing i wanted to ask you on specifically like i was planning on asking for this podcast was um do you think there are things that you can do and experience that is good for your soul do you get it like meaning yeah, yeah. you know how like people say there's soul food or there's soul music or there's um there's like oh man that felt that felt good for my soul you know like when we have um phrases like that like especially like soul food you know when yeah, you eat soul food yeah. so soul food is like macaroni and cheese and yeah. fried chicken and you know like yeah i think i i think i i think that's a dangerous question as well Ooh. because um you know as i said you know how do you experience the soul you know what is what is good and what is bad you know it, it for somebody something something good uh, you know something could be good for them and good for their soul or they could perceive it to be good for their soul but in reality it could be a vice or in reality it could be it could be bad for the majority mm -hmm. of people who li live on this 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 earth yeah. but i still th do think that there is things that are uh you know can feed your soul and i think as a uh, as a as a whole humanity ha have kind of 
define those uh, certain things and we've defined it through you know this idea of soulless and soul we'll call someone soulless if they've you know if they're for example a murderer or mm. a you know um uh, a rapist or etc or we'll call someone soulful who you know gives and gives charity is thinking about other people who's uh you know happy and etc so yeah i think they're definitely and or you know some people think dancing and music and etc all these stuff are soulful so you know when we look at certain things like that we see two two different types of things don't we yeah. We see something that is defined you know umbrella term evil and we say something that we we uh, uh, the other side is something that is that is good yeah um for me to be honest the things that really uh feed me uh whether it's feeding my soul or my mind i don't know but it makes me feel good so you know i hope it's feeding my soul is you know meditation is is a oh wicked yeah yeah is a is a really really good one yeah. um and yeah i i am talking about the meditation that you're you you do and also the meditation that you know through prayer um, yes yeah yeah uh, the the five times med five times a day uh prayer that do, do, i would definitely class that as th that as meditation and i think it should be taken as meditation and i think the skills and the the faculties and the the kind of the process that you use in modern day or the the meditation that is being churned out right now should definitely be used in prayer and i say that because what you know when you recommended me those uh meditation uh the apps. yeah yeah um i noticed that i was able to concentrate more during those prayers that's awesome while i was uh, while i was meditating and yeah. i realized that when i stopped um that concentration wasn't there wow and strangely i felt better yeah when i was able to able to meditate okay uh, when i was able to concentrate yeah and wh what i mean by concentration is you know i was using that thing of listening to the ambient air uh, ambient sound and feeling where i am etc and obviously you know trying to think about uh you know all, what the the companions of the prophets said to mm. how to meditate in in salah i'm not saying that i was able to uh you know visualize what they recommended yeah throughout the prayer but you know i bounced from place to place to place uh, but kept kept that concentration um and the euphoric feeling afterwards was was exponential compared to uh, other moments of of prayer yeah. so uh, for me that is that is something um that is uh, quite um yeah that's empowering cool empowering for the soul you know that um what came to mind when you were talking about that was you know the sahaba who had was it an arrow stuck yeah, in him yeah. and that's he was mad. So imagine crazy. like it was too painful to take it out so he said okay hold on let me pray and when when whilst i'm praying you pull it out because of the meditative state that he was in in prayer yeah, would yeah. mean that his mind wouldn't have to be um, conscious of that pain of the arrow being pulled out. It's, it's crazy. Like, I mean, now, uh, if you said that to me five years ago, I'll be like, oh, this is this is just one of those crazy, like, I'll be inspired by it, yeah. but it's that, that'll that be it. It won't be something that is achievable. Yeah. Um, or is it will be more of a fantasy than anything else. Yeah. But you say it to me now, I was like, actually, you know what? There is mechanisms for that to be a reality. Yeah. Uh, now that I have meditated, the little that I have meditated, and you, you know, I know you've meditated for a very long time. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure you think that that no, actually, that is very possible. You can become yeah, numb yeah, yeah. Uh, to to your absolutely to your body. Yeah. So on on the reason I asked you about if you could could like give me um, a sense of what you thought was good for the soul. The reason why was I was thinking well. It's it's it would tie into what we're hoping to do with this podcast as well is to explore, you know, if there is something that there is uh, that that could be called the soul. Yeah. Then, by by um, just just by default, then there would be things that are good for it and bad for it, mm. or things that would help it improve or help it or or, or be bad for it, like mm. you know, make it decline, and so like me as as a person who's um like I'm 32 now and in 
you know that obviously like i'm feeling old but at the same time that doesn't mean like i've had all the experience of life to to know all the answers at all mm. you know by any means so but i have had experiences that have led me to some conclusions along the way mm-hmm. and what would be cool is like over the over the course of us doing these conversations and speaking to other people as well like we get a sense of um you know what those things are Mm. I'm sure that there's going to be things like, for example, I I didn't know about meditation until a certain mm. someone <clears throat> said, "Have you tried this?" or I heard about it, um, and I'm sure there's loads of things out there that we could experiment with, and it would give there's us some mad stuff out there. There's some cool stuff out there, bro. Sometimes I just about. don't want to say tell you because I just think. What are you holding it back for? Share this stuff with me as well. Well, interestingly, DMT. I don't know if you've heard of DMT. You've heard I've of definitely it. heard of DMT. Yep. Okay. Oh, I'm, so, I'm um, all about that, bro. Uh, so the human brain can actually produce it naturally. Okay. Uh, from the penile gland, which is... Oh, I want more of that. It's, it's quite, quite um, central quite in, our, in our brains. It's too little. <laughs> and it's strange because, you know, knowing what... Uh, the experiences that people have mm. from DMT, like... Yeah. Uh, supernatural, out of this world experience and seeing strange things, etc. Uh, it's weird because DMT is never produced in our bodies until the moment of death. Whoa! So that's a bit strange, you know. And I've always questioned: is it because you know, is is it that transition? You know what I'm talking about? The transition of the soul. Yeah. You know, we go through one transition when we're born, where uh, in our mum's uh, womb we experience certain things and then suddenly we are uh, ejected out into this world and we go through this horrific kind of transition into being able to breathe and feel be cold etc yeah. you know i think it's horrific we just don't remember it i mean seeing babies born they're like crying and they're like you, you just think i've been there twice hell. bro huh i've been there twice so. uh, yeah so you know it, it feels like they've gone through some sort of <laughs> I felt like afterwards i was like well this this must have been what it was like to be a soldier in vietnam <laughs> you know uh, just, i was talking to people you know i was talking to people who um weren't parents and i was like well, looking at them like you weren't there man <laughs> <laughs> you ain't seen what i seen um, sorry bro yeah carry on yeah so is this uh, you know all i was going to say is actually is yeah you know is death a process another process one of these processes like a stage exactly yeah Yeah. stage from you know like birth yeah um i really believe i i think it is i uh, it needs to be i i refuse to believe that there is nothing after this world um just because going back to my point of you know uh you know this is going to be a very reductionist way of uh, reduction uh, uh, an example which is very reductionist way of thinking but i just yeah. want to make an example and help uh, us to understand for ex- a, a rich guy by no means am i saying being rich it makes you happy you know happiness could lie in somewhere in somewhere else yeah. but a rich guy it, you, one could say okay fine you know what he has everything in his life um he may want to think that there's nothing else mm-hmm. Uh, uh, beyond this this world um and it's funny because that is where we see a lot of these ideologies isn't it where where people are advanced um and uh, you know they have a good life a lifestyle uh they like to think that there is nothing else there is no god etc cetera, etc cetera. one may may say well you know what they are thinking maslow's hierarchy of needs they are thinking about self self actualizations they're not too worried about safety and uh, etc yeah. um anyway but uh, so yes okay fine it's fine for them but on the other side of the spectrum where you get and again i'm not saying um that being poor that is 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 sadness you know uh, uh, that person could be completely uh, satisfied. But imagine a person who is, um, you know, um, poor and they have to wear, walk uh, five miles to get drinking water. I think it'd be inhumane for, to, to, for, you, for you to tell them that, oh, there is nothing else beyond this world and for the rest of your life, you're going to be like this. Yeah. And there's nothing else, uh, you know, your, your state will never change. I like to think that I can tell this person, actually, you know what? You may suffer for a few years, but hopefully there is something, there is light at the end of this tunnel. Yeah. Um, And I think, you know, the other implication is that you tell that person, it will drive them to desperation. You know, I I think it will drive them to desperation. And we've seen it. We've seen, you know, let's let's talk about uh, poaching, for example, right? A lot of these people, a lot of the, the people who are 
kind of killing these animals they are desperate they are very poor um and they go to the extent of killing these majestic animals yeah and you know it'd be it'd be it'd be it'd be quite infor- informative to ask them you know how do you feel when you kill this animal you know do you want to kill this animal or do you do it because there is going to be a paycheck and the uh, you know uh, um at the end yeah um so i i feel like you know if we go around for example we shouldn't and no one has but if we go around telling those people that there is nothing to there is nothing after this world this world will be chaos yeah um yeah yeah i think i think you're right it like kind of brings us back to that thing we were talking about at the beginning of there being this spectrum and you have a spectrum of life experiences mm. you know like where the you know the one top 1% of say rich people are having a certain life experience and then all the way on the other end you know the bottom however many percent who have nothing and are forced to do these things and i wonder like going back to that thing of what we were saying about what's good for the soul you know these things that people are forced to do are they are they somehow hurting their soul and hurting the you know the wider sort of life force of this planet inadvertently and would you know do they you know how you said like would you do it knowingly or if you you know if you didn't if you had the money or if you didn't have the money mm. I, I would also want to know like can you feel it like can you feel it as something which is bad for your soul as well you know that I, like, I think that I, again I, I find that really interesting that you asked um and I like to think that there will be there, there'll be a in terms of the effects that it has on the soul, there'll be a difference. Mm. I like to think. I like to think the people who are on the ground, who are desperate, who are kind of being exploited, will have their, their and killing the animals, like doing the most horrific part. I hope to th- think. I like to think that their the the negative impact they have on the soul is far less than those who are consuming the, these products mm. in these in these you know developed rich countries yeah uh you know this item is a luxury item yeah i like to think that those people who are making the demand are having more of uh, are you know having a more of a negative impact on their on their uh, on their soul than those people who are on the ground trying to make a living yeah i agree with you i think the world we live in now is um, massively interconnected and we may not ever meet this person who is, say, killing an elephant or killing another creature on this earth for whether it's for its hide or it's for its tusks or yeah. something that ends up in, say, like a handbag or a shoe that we're wearing. Yeah. But there is there is cl- complicitness, and of course, and yeah, I, th- I think you're right, man. There's like levels of complicitness. Like, there's probably way more accountability and responsibility on the part of the person who's sort of mm. sorted out in the first place mm. rather than the person who's just surviving mm. and mm. you know but that is us at over an hour now oh my god and it feels like we still got freaking it does billion, it does i more mean stuff to talk about <laughs> I, I i just because it came to my head and i'll probably forget you know what, what you were just talking about yeah i think the soul is needed for accountability yep if we don't have the soul there is no accountability and I think that is what I, the you know the, my the point that I was making at the beginning. Yeah. That if you don't have the soul, there is no accountability. And you know, I, I want there to be a soul because people need to be accountable for the things. You're like you're like the Liam Neeson of souls. Like, I will, I will come, get I'll, you. I will come and find you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll punch you. Down. I can't even do his accent, but yeah, yeah. I wish what I. What is his accent? He's he's Irish. I, I don't know. He's just. But he plays a guy in the CIA. He does not sound American. Anyways, basically, it yeah, I'm I'm feeling like we got way more to talk about. Yeah. So this, I would say to whoever's listening or watching, um, share this if you know, or comment or like interact with us because I know this is something where I would love to hear what other people yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, of you know, course. Otherwise. I mean, if we chat in crap, please, please tell us. You know, <laughs> yeah. enlighten us, educate us, because yeah. this is a re- this is a, definitely a field where we can definitely be educated and. Uh, you know share experiences um and i think that's that's quite important like you know accepting sure. these these experiences and, and you know 
being non-judgmental or skeptical about about these experiences yep and if you're listening to this on a podcast service whether it's on itunes or google or whatever please leave us a review um and subscribe and then share it with your friends and family if you're watching on youtube then give us a like and a subscribe and just go crazy in the comments and for all 10 people who are listening to this <laughs> who are probably uh, our family members thanks very much thank you assalamualaikum wa alaikum assalam